close the show. Uh, it's going to be our tech corner, uh, and uh, this is going to be uh, Dirk and uh, and Sean Parker. Sean of 3D Systems is going to join us today. They're going to be looking at uh, a new, uh, a relatively new new product here from 3D Systems. The uh, the is it the 3D Systems Capture Scanner? There it is, right there. And I'm going to throw it now to Dirk and Sean. So take it away, guys. Oh, well, thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, as Mike said, I'm here with Sean Parker with uh, 3D Systems. And Sean, Capture, Geomagic Verify, what are we looking at? Well, happy Pi Day again. Happy Pi Day, 3.14. <laughs> can't stress that enough. <laughs> so, Dirk, what we're looking at today is the 3D Systems Capture White Light 3D Scanner. Um, and we've also got our first article inspection software package called Geomagic Verify. What we're going to do today is kind of uh, walk through a little bit of an inspection program, set that up, and then we're going to scan this little 3D printed widget that I've created here. Um, and just watch the uh, the software work. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so what I've got right here is Geomagic Verify. This is, like I said, our first article inspection process. Um, and I've already kind of started a uh, inspection feature tree um, process here. So basically what Verify is, is uh, it's a inspection package built on a 3D CAD uh, kernel. So basically the Parasolid kernel like SOLIDWORKS is built on um, is what the, uh, the software was developed on. And the advantages that that gives us uh, for an inspection package is twofold. First of all, we've got this inspection feature tree and that gives us a really repeatable um, uh, process for every uh, part that we create. So once I set up my feature tree here, every part that I uh, um, basically inspect subsequent to this one will have the same process applied to it so it's very re repeatable. And by, by feature tree that's the order in which things are going to be inspected like the inspection plan sort of thing? Or? Exactly okay. that's the inspection plan it's, it's okay. analogous to kind of your feature tree your history tree in a parametric CAD okay. package so uh, you know SOLIDWORKS, uh, CREO, PROE that sort of thing. Sure. Um, the other advantage that being on a CAD kernel gives us is that all of the reference geometry and everything like that is already derived from the CAD body. We don't have to go through and manually set any of that up. So it knows all of our measurements and everything on the nominal. Um, and so that makes it pretty quick. Okay. And uh, if we don't want to do that, the other nice thing that we have available to, uh, to some of our users is if you have a CAD body with PMI already enabled in it, um, we can import that directly. So you don't have to reset up all of those geometries to inspect. That comes in uh, native with a CAD model. Okay. So what I've got here, like I said, is I already kind of started with the inspection feature tree. I've got a couple of alignment processes. I've got a whole deviation to give me a color map of the overall uh, compliance to the CAD body. And the one thing that I didn't set up in here is some GD and T. So I'm going to uh, just show you how quick and easy it is. And to you've got the full set of GT and T. Uh, 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 Tools, right? right, right. So when I get into my GDNT mode here, I've got all of the. Uh, these are all three-dimensional GDNT. I can do section views where I do two-dimensional GDNT callouts okay. as well. But we do su uh, support the full set of Y14.5 ANSI standards. So I'm just going to do a, a real quick datum on this face. Place that right there, and you can see I, as I hover over each individual face, it gives me, uh, you know, kind of what that is. I've got a plane, a cylinder, a sphere, that sort of thing. Um, and then I'm going to create a flatness callout on that. And uh, I'll just use the default tolerance here. And when I apply this, it's actually going to do a combination datum reference frame right here. One more, I'll just do a quick surface profile. On, That's pretty straightforward. You're this. just dragging, basically clicking and dragging, right? Clicking yep. and dragging. Okay. Just yep. clicking on the face that I want to apply that callout on and okay. then uh, dragging it out into space so I can actually see where that callout is. So we'll go ahead and uh, leave that here. You can see that when I do add these things, I've got a datum, a flatness, and a surface profile here. So this is all of my nominal value, actual value deviation. This is all the tabulated um, measurements and everything associated with that. Since I don't have any scan data in there right now, it's not going to be calculating sure. anything because uh, uh, we'll actually get to that right now. The other, re the other thing that we see here is I have some errors saying that I don't have any scan data. So none of this will apply. So let's go ahead and take some scan data. I'm going to go ahead and exit my GD and T mode here. And by the way, I set up a uh, report in the background, so all of this stuff will be tabulated automatically um, in whatever report template that I decide to generate. Okay. So I'll go into my scanner direct control and select the Geomagic Capture. Um, the nice thing that uh, about having this capture system interface with this software is it's all in one. You don't have to go through the scanners manufacturers little capture interface and then take the data and then transfer that data in here. This is all just all one in, system. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'll go ahead and connect the scanner here. It takes just a sec. This is all connecting through Ethernet. And it brings up a little preview of what the scanner can see. So if I kind of move this around, you can see in there that it's uh, it's ready to roll. And that's to help you aim uh, that's to help you aim the camera at the uh, uh, at the target. Is Basically, right? yeah, okay. exactly. So Right now I can play around with my exposure. 
and I want to take a scan here. So um, if you can see in the camera, it was very, very quick. Takes a scan, and there's my scan oh, data. First scan, okay. Yeah, right. first scan data right there. This is all line of sight. This is a, a blue light scanner, so it's very, very quick. It'll scan the part in about half a second or so, and then uh, kind of process that data and render it. And if I take a second scan, for example, if I come in here and move this and uh, hit the scan button again, it's actually going to, when it's doing its processing step, it's going to align that with the original scan data. So something like this where we have real nice prismatic features, um, you can see that the auto alignment was able to kind of find the similarities okay. between the two scan and perform that alignment. And, and if it wasn't to align it, I'm, I'm assuming you could manually align lay, uh, uh, scans if, if it didn't, had a hard time auto aligning them. Right? Absolutely, okay, yeah. Sure. So if there was, uh, you know, if it's kind of a less feature rich part than that, if there's, you know, kind of wide open space or kind of, um, you know, big freeform op, uh, shapes in there. We can do either target alignment, so a paper or a spherical target, or we can also just do a manual um, kind of a post-process uh, stage later on. We'll, we'll talk about the scanner here just a little bit too. Uh, okay. Very small uh, form factor. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, lightweight. Um, what kind of uh, accuracy? So we can go down to about 60 microns at the uh, you know kind of ideal operating range. Uh, the max accuracy uh, issues that we would have would be about 100 microns. So still well within uh, you know the average needs of, of the inspecting consumer. Okay. And it's a very very like you said small form factor, really sleek, nice aluminum case. It's very portable, very easy to move around. Okay. Okay, so I took two scans there, and we can see that um, it already aligned those things for us, but um, what I could do is continue down that path and just rotate this keep around. Keep rotating and, and getting more scans. Keep taking all the yeah. scans. Like I said, it's line of sight, so you're going to need multiple angles typically. Just make sure that you get all the data that you're trying to inspect, and, uh, and you're good to go. You'll also notice that it's not in the right coordinate system right now. That's because the, uh, the alignment processes that I've set forth in the procedure to inspect this part, they haven't actually been ran on this yet. So no analysis yep. has been done. It allows me to take a number of scans, merge them all together into one, and then finally go through that process. So that's why the, the scan data is showing up outside of the actual CAD model, which right, is uh, above right. it. In, in so yeah, the scanner has its yeah. own coordinate yeah. system, and it's not necessarily that of the CAD body. Gotcha. So from here, basically what I can do is exit my scan mode and it's asking me if I want to combine those things and do an alignment process and if I wanted to I could do that um, in the interest of saving time though we can just pretend like uh, sure we've, that we, gone we've through done all, all of, of our that. scans exactly. sure, yeah. and then I can just tell it to run the inspection process and what that's going to do is it's going to exit the capture interface here in a sec and it's going to go down that linear step-by-step -step process that I already set for. So both of the alignments, it's got that whole deviation where it'll do the color map, it's got a section mode, um, and then it's got that GD&T. So I'm not going to do it right now because it's, uh, it's just taking, you know, going through that process, we're in sure, a way yeah. and doing it. Yeah. Um, I've actually pulled up a, uh, another one here. It did run it, by the way, on the uh, limited scan data that we had. But I'm just going to grab one that I already ran just a minute ago. And you can see what we've got. So, so obviously, this one you did multiple scans to fill in fill in all the shadow areas mm -hmm. and so forth. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's very very simple. It's really intuitive. It kind of walks you through the process of combining all of those scans together. And then once we have that final merged object, we can run our inspection on it. Okay. All right. So what we've done here, and and you can see that I've got you know a few inspectable objects. I've got uh, some. Annotation tags that I've applied to it. I've got some two-dimensional GD and T, and then, like you saw earlier, I set up that surface profile. Once I do that, it, it inspects it all for me. I've got the nice color map visible, sure. and then it's got my uh, all my data filled into the the tabular view down below with all the the kind of statistics and uh, histograms that sort of thing. Um, once we have that, we can jump into our report and take a look at the report that we've been spat out here, and then we can save this out or or do whatever it is that we need to later. So, and, and the report includes uh, uh, both the CAD, uh, both the CAD uh, model and uh, the scan data. Totally customizable. You can tell okay. it what you want to see. Uh, you can set your own report template. You can actually mirror um, some of the more generic reports out there that are kind of required by vendors and that sort of thing. Sure. Um, it just requires a little bit setup on the front end. And once you have that one set up, you can apply it to all of the okay. different parts that you're inspecting. So we've got some just standard views of our CAD and our scan body. Um, we've got the uh, histogram and some of the statistics of the alignment and the overall uh, kind of just shape of the object here. And obviously, this is a standard uh, standard color map where red and yellow hues are sure. high. You know, green is within a tolerance. I'm assuming the, the, the data can be uh, your uh, results data, your scan data, and so forth can be exported? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we can save it out as a PowerPoint or a PDF, or we can actually take all of this data um, in the charts and export it into something like uh, you know Microsoft Office products, so we okay. can display it that way as well. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, what we were doing uh, earlier. Is you were kind of manually rotating this in order to in order to fill in all the all the shadow areas. I think you said that uh, one of the options coming up is going to be a uh, a rotary stage, right? Right. We're going to have another package for uh, some of our our uh, customers so that uh, we'll actually have a turntable that's driven by the software. Um, and it basically uh, lets you do two things. First of all, if it's a known rotation amount, uh, it helps out with the alignment a lot. And then it also, because uh, this is all driven by the software, so you can kind of pre-program it, say that I want it to rotate 60 degrees and do a full 360 scan, or kind of okay. customize some of those options. And then we also have, uh, the other nice thing about having the rotation, uh, especially with the inspection package, is that it's more automated. You can kind of just set it up to take all your scans for you instead of having to manually do every single one of them. Sure. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, we're obviously using the stationary. Um, could you, will this function as kind of a handheld scanner? I mean, could you, uh, could you just hold it and point it, or does it need to be stationary each time you're, you're taking an image? It, it does need, uh, it doesn't have any image stabilization like okay, that. Right. It does need to be uh, standalone or kind of standing, freestanding by itself okay. and in one location. Now, that doesn't mean to say that I can't move this and pick it up and scan another area on the part. Right. Um, we just need to make sure that we know how to align those two sure. scans. So either get a lot of good, um, you know, interesting overlapping data of solid uh, kind of prismatic features like that, or, or, or paper targets. targets. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, now this this functions right now. It's working with GeoMagic Verify, but the the capture system actually ties into other uh, GeoMagic software as well, right? That's correct. All of the uh, scan based design products that we offer, um, like uh, Capture for SolidWorks or GeoMagic Design X or the uh, um, what is it, Capture for Space Claim or uh, the Design Direct product that we have. So we can do scan-based design with it. We also do have another um, scan to inspection package called Geomagic uh, Control that is more of a hands-off automated kind of a uh, uh, you know assembly line sort of inspection oh, okay. package. So there's scripting involved in that. There's Python scripting. There's kind of a lot more automated things. So Okay, so you might have something like this set up on, on like you said, a conveyor system. A right. part moves into place. It captures data, inspects it kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we can either do a single scanner like that or we can actually set up a batch of scanners together. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, before we uh, wrap up here, uh, bullet points. What do you want people to walk away with? Okay, so we've got the capture device. It works with all of the Geomagic software. Prices start at about 15000 go up to about thirty, depending on what you're looking for. Um, very, very high accuracy. Really simple and intuitive to use because it works directly inside all of the software. There's no kind of interface that you need to do data exchange between. Okay. Really cool piece of equipment. All right. Well, Sean Parker, uh, 3D Systems. Yes, sir. And the Capture uh, 3D Scanner and Geomagic Verify. Uh, thanks a lot for showing it to thanks us. Thanks for having me on. Okay. Back to you, Mike. All right. Thank you, Dirk. Thank you, Sean Parker of, of 3D Systems. That's the Capture Scanner. Uh, another great tech corner there from the guys, Dirk and Sean. And Dirk, thank you for doing that. I, sure. I think we always enjoy having a, having a tech corner. Yeah, it's, it's fun to get equipment in here. This was a, this was I just a wish one. they'd leave it behind. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let us play with it.